Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to lecture 53. We are discussing about the turboprop engine. In last lecture, we were discussing about single spool turboprop engine which was having the configuration like this where the turbine it is connected with the compressor as well as with the propeller by using say gearbox. And we were discussing about the power transmission or say work transfer. Initially, we have understood like power transmission for the compressor that's what is given by mechanical efficiency into turbine work. Later on that work it has been transferred to the gearbox that's what is given in terms of difference of work. Then later we have discussed about the gearbox efficiency and then we have considered say propeller efficiency. This is how the transmission of power that's what we have discussed in last lecture. Very important aspect we were discussing is in terms of transfer of work. Here in this case we know this turbine it has been used for rotating comp compressor as well as propeller. And what amount of work that's what has been transferred for both the cases it is little tricky to understand and to calculate. One more thing is in exhaust we are having nozzle. So this nozzle also is contributing some amount of thrust that's what will be generated by this engine. And in order to understand that part we have taken the approach where we have considered say ideal enthalpy drop that's what is from say 4 to 9 S and from there we have considered say some fraction alpha that's what we have considered as a power split factor that we have discussed about say alpha into delta h fraction that's what we have considered for the turbine and remaining amount that is 1 minus alpha into delta h we have configured for our say nozzle. So this is what all we were discussing in the last lecture. Now let's discuss about say some other approach. So here in this case if we look at say we are having say single spool turboprop engine Suppose if I consider it is having say inlet area say A in, exit area we can consider say E A exit. Same way if we consider say this engine is fitted with the aircraft which is moving with say V aircraft velocity, the air that will ingest inside is with V in velocity. Similarly, suppose if I consider say mass flow rate that we are writing as M dot in and our inlet pressure that's what is given by P in that is atmospheric pressure at whatsoever altitude it is flying. Here in this case if we consider this propeller, this propeller that's what is exchanging the energy and that we are representing in terms of delta P0. This delta P0 is nothing but this uh, total pressure rise that's what is happening across our propeller. So let's put that in terms say my exhaust total pressure from the propeller that's what is P0 in plus delta P0. This delta P0 that's what is by designer's choice and in exit we can say we are having exit pressure to be P exhaust that is also atmospheric pressure and we have exhaust velocity that we are representing as a V exhaust. Now let's try to understand this what exactly the mean is. Let me put it here. Suppose if I consider this is the plane, I say it's an inlet plane or we are applying say Bernoulli's equation in front of the propeller, then that we can rep represent in terms of P0 equal to P plus half rho V square. That is at the inlet, that's why it is suffixed with in. At the same way, I can apply Bernoulli's equation at the exit of my propeller. That's what is given by P0 exit 
it is equal to p exit plus one half rho v square exit velocity. Now we cannot apply Bernoulli's equation say for the propeller say at the entry condition and at the ex exit condition this is what we are representing. Now let us put this as say delta p0. This delta p0 is nothing but outlet pressure minus inlet pressure. If I will be representing in terms of what equation we have then it will be given in this form. Suppose if I consider say my exhaust pressure and inlet pressure that is what is my atmospheric pressure then this equation that will be simplified in terms of half rho v exit square minus v inlet square. You will surprise what is the reason why are we doing these things. So let us try to understand what is the meaning of that. Since this is what is my P0, we have our fundamental equation. This fundamental equation it says my force it is given by pressure into area. This pressure I am representing in terms of say P0 exit into exit area minus P0 inlet into inlet area. For the sake of simplicity, let us consider my inlet area and exit area to be same. If that is the case, then we can represent that my thrust it is given by delta P0 into my area. This delta P0 that is what we know from earlier equation. It is half rho V exit square minus V inlet square. And if I will be simplifying this equation, it says my thrust which is generated by this propeller it is given by one half rho a v exit square minus v inlet square. So rough estimation of the thrust generation by the propeller people most of the time they are using this formulation. They are calculating based on this equation. Now there are fundamental equations, fundamental explanation that is what is available for the propeller. So when we are doing a design for this engine or when we are doing cycle analysis most of the time people they are considering initially the propeller characteristics and from there also we can move forward in order to calculate what will be the thrust generated by the propeller, what will be the amount of power that is what is required in order to rotate that propeller. But since this course is dedicated for the gas turbine cycles and that is the reason we will not be discussing that in more detail. But you can understand this is also one of the way to calculate the thrust that is what is generated by the propeller. Now in order to understand this say whole formulation we can go with say momentum theory or actuator disk theory, blade element theory, we can also go with say combined propeller theory. This all explanation that is what is available in basic books we can say in propulsion books or gas turbine books. You can go through that part if you are interested in going with more detail how exactly people they are doing their calculation on the basis of propeller configuration. But at this moment for our rough estimation you can say this is what is fairly enough to understand what we mean by the thrust that is what is generated by the propeller. So this is also one of the way we have discussed thrust calculation in earlier formulation where we have calculated the power then based on that power we have calculated our thrust. So this is also one of the way as I said. Now let us move towards the next kind of configuration. So here if we look at we are having single spool turbo probe engine. This single spool turbo probe engine as we have discussed this is having the configuration in which my compressor and propeller they both are on the same shaft that is what will be rotated by the turbine and that turbine we have discussed it is named as a gas generator. So here are some of the engines which are existing. So Rolls Royce T56 engine that is what is being used for C130 Hercules say aircraft where it is connected with this kind of configuration where we are having say axial flow compressor. That is what will be followed by the combustion chamber and we are having say axial flow turbines. In line to that there are many engines suppose if we look at TPE331 that is what is generated or developed by Honeywell. If we look at here, here in this case we are having two centrifugal compressors that is what will be followed by combustion chamber reversible angular combustor then we are having say turbines and this turbine that is what is connected with 
this shaft using the gearbox and that's what will be rotating our propeller. So mainly for Hindustan Turbo Trainer 40, this engine that's what has been used. Now here we need to understand one thing, what all engines we were discussing in terms of turbojet engine, turbofan engine and turbo probe engine, we must realize here the purpose of this engine it is to rotate the propeller and if possible we can extract some amount of thrust that can be generated by the nozzle but the major focus that's what is for the generation of power okay and that power we are using for the rotation of a propeller so now let's look at here so here this is what is a kind of configuration you can say we are having say axial flow compressor that's what will be rotated by say axial flow turbine and we are having say discontinuation or you can say we are having say different spool we have understanding about the spool so you can say here we are having one spool on which compressors and turbine they are connected we are having other spool that's what we say it is my power turbine or free turbine that is connected with the propeller by using this gearbox now for turbo probe engine the most challenging part it is not only to design this compressors or turbines or combustion chamber most challenging part it is to design the intake and we know how we have placed this intake that's what will be giving us what will be the efficiency of the engine what will be the performance of the engine here in this case this is what is ct7 engine if you look at they are having special kind of configuration where in case bird it will get ingest that can be kept inside by say bird catcher. There are applications where it is being used in the desert area. So they are having say particle separator that's what is used to separate say sand particles from the going inside the engine. So this is representing the similar construction in a detailed way. So now you can say we are moving towards the next kind of configuration where we are having two spools. So let's look at what we mean by two spool configuration. Here in this case if we look at say we are having our compressor that is connected with the turbine. Secondly if we look at we are having secondary turbine or we can say power turbine. This power turbine that is only connected with the propeller. So this is the kind of configuration we can say it's two spool turbo probe engine. Okay. So this is representing the cut section of AE2100. That's what is being used for Lockheed Martin C310J Super Hercules. Such four engines are connected with this aircraft. Now here in this case you can imagine the power generated by this engine is huge power and that's what can be configured by having say number of stages for compressor as well as number of stages for the turbine and we have our reduction gear that's what is connected with the propeller shaft okay similar kind of configuration it is also possible to have with axial centrifugal compressor combination so GE338 and Pratt and Whitney 150 are of such configuration where in place of having axial flow compressor which has been rotated by the turbine the turbine we can say HP turbine okay similarly we will be having say axial flow compressor that will be followed by the centrifugal compressor and that's what will be rotated by HP turbine we have discussed earlier there is a special requirement of compactness of these engines and in order to reduce the number of stages for axial flow compressor we are going with say centrifugal compressor but the challenge with the centrifugal compressor as we discussed earlier it is to turn the flow from axial to radial direction and again we need to configure our flow in axial direction because we will be having our turbine which are of axial configuration so let's look at as we go ahead we will get the understanding of that part here in this case we are having two spool configuration in which we are having say our HP turbine which is connected with the HP compressor. We are having 
the LP turbine which is connected with the LP compressor as well as our propeller shaft. So this is representing the cut section. You can see we are having say more number of axial compressor stages. So this is representing how my flow is going inside. So we will be having the inlet that's what is of this shape from where the flow which is going inside. Then as we have discussed, we will be having the rise of pressure. Again, it will be passing to the HP compressor where we will be having rise of pressure again. And later on, we are having combustion chamber followed by the turbine and exhaust nozzle. Okay. Now, let's look at what all are the other possibilities. Here in this case, if we look at, we can say what all we have discussed, that's what is configured people used to say booster on HP pressure spool. So here in this case, this compressor, we can define as a HP compressor and LP compressor as we have discussed earlier also in week 6, week 7, say we can configure this compressor, we can say this compressor as booster compressor. So here in this case, booster compressor and my HP compressor, they both are on common shaft connected with the HP turbine and my LP turbine that's what is used to rotate only propeller. If we look at here carefully, the number of stages for this turbine, they are more. The requirement is to rotate the propeller at a lower speed. So the whole work it has been extracted with more number of stages in order to reduce the rotational speed of the turbine as well as that will help in order to reduce the rotational speed of the propeller. Anyway, gearbox, it's most essential part for the turbo probe engine and that's what is creating the trouble or the challenge for the design. So here in this case, if we look at, this is the different kind of configuration. If we look at carefully, we are having the intake, it is placed somewhere here. So from here the air that's what is going inside we, are, we will be having say axial flow compressor that's what will be followed by the centrifugal compressor and here in this case we are having say turbine say this turbine that's what is rotating say all the stages of the compressor but at the same time if you look at on the rear side we are having free turbine or the power turbine that's what is connected with the shaft on the rear side. Now here in this case the exhaust from this nozzle and the design for this nozzle that's what is very challenging. Just look at here these nozzles they are been deflecting the flow like this. The purpose here for the nozzle it is not for the thrust generation. If you recall when we discuss the configuration when we are fitting with the engines on the aircraft that where also we have discussed the same configuration. Okay, this is what is the most famous engine that's what is PT6 engine, PT6E configuration. Here also we are having say our axial flow compressor that's what will be followed by the turbine and on the rear side we will be having. So you can imagine the engine it is placed in this way. So puller and pusher kind of configuration what all we have discussed you need to keep that in mind how you will be using our propeller, how we will be placing our propeller and accordingly my inlet that's what is decided with. So if you recall we have discussed based on the intake we can say whether my engine it is pusher kind or puller kind of configuration. Okay. Now let's look at here, here in this case if we look at we have a different kind of configuration where the turbine, HP turbine that's what is connected only with the HP compressor and LP turbine which is connected with the booster compressor as well as propeller. So here you know like it is the designer's choice as per the requirement as, the, as per the space available and as per the cost of the engine people they are designing with a different kind of configuration. So there is no super spacious discussion about say how and why these people they are configuring like this but one can imagine there is a special requirement of the size of the engine, weight of the engine, cost of the engine 
that's what all will be deciding how we will be configuring our construction for the engine and that's what need to be decided when we are doing our cycle analysis because that's what is the very first step okay so we need to look we need to read all the configuration which is available which is defined and accordingly we need to move forward with okay now let's look at here so this is representing the rolls royce rb53 dart engine where if we look at carefully we are having our inlet that's what will be followed by two centrifugal compressors they are connected with say here the flow it is entering actually it will be going out radially again that's what is been passed actually so this is what is a flow channel that's what need to be designed carefully because you can imagine my flow it is turning too much here and then it is moving inside where there are more chances for my pressure to drop and that will increase the losses but when we are looking for the compact size of the engine then we have this kind of configuration that's what is possible with so basically when we are doing our cycle analysis it is not necessary to understand what kind of compressor or what kind of turbine it is been used but you know like since we are studying this course in detail with detailed discussion it must be discussed here and that's the reason why we have incorporated this part here if you look at say this is representing how my flow that's what is happening we are having say our inlet that will be followed by the say centrifugal compressor from here the flow is entering inside the second centrifugal compressor and here in this case it will be passing through the reverse annular combustor that will be followed by this turbines let me put the point here now what pressure ratio that's what is generated by this centrifugal compressor it's a function of rotational speed and here in this case if we look at since we are using this centrifugal compressor and if we will be rotating at lower speed then my diameter of the compressor will be very large and that's where my size of the engine will be increasing the size in the sense we can say the diameter of this engine will be increasing in order to avoid that kind of situation they have configured that in such a way that in the front side they are using say reduction gear with different stages which will take care of rotational speed of propeller as well as the size of the engine as well as the configuration of the compressor so be careful just look at carefully if you are interested in understanding and learning how this design it is been done we already have nptel course which is discussing about say design of this axial flow compressor for different configuration in near future we will be having a new course where we will be discussing how to design this radial machines basically what we mean by radial machine is say centrifugal compressor mixed flow configuration this all will be coming very soon okay now let's look at here so if we look at carefully here in this case we are having three spool configuration also is possible what we mean by three spool configuration is we are having say here we have hp turbine that's what will be rotating my hp compressor we will be having say lp turbine sometimes people they used to say ip turbine or ip turbine means intermediate pressure turbine if you recall when we have discussed three spool configuration for turbo fan engine we have discussed this point so here this lp turbine it is used to rotate the booster compressor or say lp compressor and we have power turbine okay this power turbine that's what is connected with the propeller using the gearbox and we will be having the nozzle that also will be contributing the thrust okay now suppose if i consider this engine that's what is having large length or say length and the diameter they both are higher then people they come up with the other solution just look at here so here if we look at carefully this also represents the three spool configuration what is the difference here here we are having booster compressor we are having say hp compressor but look at carefully here in this case 
we have our centrifugal compressor also attached with. So you can imagine when we are looking for large capacity engine, large power requirement is there, huge power requirement is there, then you need to go with this kind of configuration because fitting of this engine on wing, that's what is very challenging. And we have discussed all these aspects during our second week when we were discussing about the Intex. Okay, so we need to be very careful in terms of what all configurations we are looking for. But for initial stage when we are doing our cycle analysis, that time we are interested in what is the pressure ratio for booster compressor, what will be the pressure ratio for HP compressor. Based on that, maybe in later configuration, we will be selecting whether we will be going with all axial compressor or the combination of axial centrifugal compressor or we will be going with say all centrifugal compressor. All possibilities are there. Okay. Now let us look at here. So this configuration is of a different type. If we look at carefully, what is the configuration here? Say we are having our HP turbine. This HP turbine it is connected with the HP compressor as well as if we look at carefully this LP compressor that is also been connected on the same shaft. Okay. Now if we look carefully this turbine, this power turbine what we are looking at that is what is connected only with this propeller. Okay. And what is the beauty of this? So, if you recall, we were discussing about say intercooler regenerator kind of configuration. We have discussed this in week 9 where we were discussing new innovative kind of engines. And there we have discussed what all research are going on for intercooler and regenerator configuration. Where we have discussed there is one more possibility to apply this logic for the turboprop engine. So this is the configuration. We have understanding this is what we say as our intercooler. So this intercooler that is connected between say our LP compressor and HP compressor. Then we will be having say regenerator. So the high pressure, high temperature air which is coming out from the HP compressor that will pass through this heat exchanger. That's what is called say regenerator. This regenerator again will be raising the temperature and that's what will be input to the combustion chamber. And if you recall, we have discussed what all are the benefits of say intercooling and regenerative kind of cycle. Can you quickly plot the TS diagram for this configuration? Let's see how much you have recall from the previous week because very earlier say last week only we have discussed about this configuration. So let us try to look at just put it at the earliest part. Let us see what all we have. Say we have our inlet condition. This is my intake. Then we are having LP compressor. The next component what we have is our intercooler. So this intercooler that is what will be decreasing the temperature of the air. This decreased temperature and the pressure air again we are supplying to say HP compressor. From HP compressor suppose if I consider the conventional cycle without regenerator then we will be having the heat addition which is happening at constant pressure and that will be raising the temperature and that temperature we say it is HP turbine entry temperature or turbine entry temperature. We are having our expansion which is happening in HP turbine. Next expansion that is what is happening in our power turbine. Later on if we look at carefully here we are having the regenerator. What re this regenerator will do? It will exchange the heat between cold air and hot air. So hot air is or hot gas is nothing but the flow which is coming out from the turbine and cold air which is coming out from our compressor that will get heated up here. So that is what we are representing in terms of regenerator. 
okay so one side it is cooler side other side it is getting heated up and from 7 to 9 that's what is representing my exhaust nozzle so here in this case we have discussed a lot about the configuration earlier in turbofan engine here the benefit as we have discussed is in terms of what we say power requirement that's what is reducing at the same time the heat amount of heat addition if we are not having say regenerator then that amount of heat addition will be say t04 or h04 minus h03 but by incorporating this regenerator this amount of heat addition will be h04 minus h035 so that's what is a benefit and that's what has attracted the attention for the researcher engine developers to move towards this kind of configuration with interest of time we will not be discussing in detail if you are interested you can search the literature available in open source if we discuss particularly for the turbo probe engine not much details which are available in open literature though these engines are of most widely used because we have discussed for regional transport aircrafts for the small aircrafts this is a main choice but you will not find much literature that's what is pertaining to this turbo probe engines okay with this let's move towards the comparison for turbo jet turbo fan and turbo probe engines because we have started initially with the turbo jet engine then we have discussed a lot about turbo fan engine then we have discussed or we are discussing at this moment for the turbo probe engine so let's take the comparison with five main parameters of interest very first parameter is our flight speed so we need to configure say turbo jet engine that's what is providing the higher flight speed for turbo fan engine as we have discussed it is moderate speed and for turbo probe they are flying at low speed so here if you look at this turbo jet engines that's what we are using for fighter aircraft even for commercial aircraft we are able to achieve very high flying Mach number maybe in the range of 2 2.2 similarly turbo fan engine what we are using for commercial aircraft that's what is around say 0.8 or 0.85 and for military aircraft that's what has reached to 2.2 turbo probe engines they are flying at say low Mach number in the range of 0.4 to 0.6 okay it depends on what is our application next important parameter for the selection is thrust to weight ratio if we configure turbo jet engine that's what is having say a thrust to height weight ratio to be high for turbo fan engine that's what will be moderate or lower and for turbo probe engine it is lowest one the amount of fuel used for thrust that's what is say moderate for turbo jet engine and it is lowest for turbo fan and turbo probe engine and that's where our commercial aircraft that's what has come into the picture we are discussing about the fuel economy when we are configuring the fuel economy that time the choice is with turbo fan engine and turbo probe engine very next that's what is in terms of thrust to airflow what we can say as a specific thrust this is highest for the turbo jet engine it is moderate for both turbo fan as well as turbo probe engine now when we are discussing about the ground clearance ground clearance between engine and the ground that's what is good for turbo jet engine it is moderate for turbo fan engine but we have discussed when we are moving with high bypass ratio or very high bypass ratio or ultra high bypass ratio engine then my ground clearance that's what is the issue with turbo fan engine for turbo probe engine this ground clearance is a major challenge that's what is poor okay so this is what all we are discussing in terms of say relative term be careful what all we are putting in terms of point it is varying from engine to engine but in general this is what is our understanding now let's look at what all we are looking for and what all we have discussed till now for last nine lectures and this is what is say say tenth week so it says when we are discussing about the turbojet engine my trust it is lower for the lower speed 
that's what was a limitation we have discussed for turbo jet engine higher specific thrust fuel consumption then it is having low specific weight so weight to thrust ratio that's what is lower and its frontal area also is lower so that's what has attracted the attention towards the movement for turbofan engine where we are having higher thrust at lower speed that's what is a major concern thrust specific fuel consumption is better compared to our turbojet engine the noise issue is not the major concern if we are discussing about the propulsive efficiency then the propulsive efficiency is higher compared to turbojet engine it depends on what speed we are flying with similarly let's look at about the turboprop engine the attraction is because of higher propulsive efficiency at the lower speed we have discussed this it is correlated with the exit velocity and flight speed then it is more complicated and heavier compared to our turbojet and turbofan engines because we have a special device we say is a gearbox that's what is creating the trouble for that the specific fuel consumption it is lower and that's the reason why more attraction is focused towards a application of this engine for regional transport aircrafts and the noise because of propeller that's what is highest for this okay now with this all let's move towards say one numerical say just take the data take this information with you say we have regional passenger aircraft which is cruise at altitude where ambient pressure and temperature are 38 kilopascal and minus 30 degree centigrade the aircraft is powered by twin shaft turboprop engine when we say twin shaft remember we are having the pre turbine kind of configuration that's what is been used for rotating our propeller the cruise velocity is 320 kilometers per hour following data which are available it says the propeller efficiency is 82% compressor efficiency is 84% burner efficiency is 98% efficiency of the hp turbine is 85% efficiency of lp turbine is 90% consider mechanical efficiency that's what is 99% for hp turbine and 95% for lp turbine gearbox efficiency that's what is 99% nozzle efficiency is say 98% okay now here in this case the core mass flow rate is given it is 2 kg per second the inlet total pressure recovery factor is 0.98 compressor pressure ratio is 6.3 maximum allowable turbine entry temperature is 1 to 1 to kelvin the total pressure loss in combustion chamber is 2% consider the heating value of the fuel as 42000 kJ per kg the design power split between lp turbine and engine nozzle is 0.95 just understand what is the meaning of that this is what we say in terms of our parameter or say factor power split factor alpha you need to calculate the properties of working fluid at all stations thrust force thrust specific fuel consumption and propulsive efficiency so let's look at this information we can say this is what is our configuration you can quickly plot your ts diagram for this configuration and this is what will be the ts diagram here in this case some fraction it is given that means we need to take care of what we mean by say our delta h okay but be careful here in this case this delta h is at different location my hp turbine it is used to rotate my compressor and my lp turbine it is used to rotate only propeller so you need to be careful about this configuration okay so let's discuss about the hint point and then we will stop it so the hint here for the inlet we have information about the flying velocity entry temperature entry pressure and power pressure recovery factor 
Based on that, we can calculate what will be the exit pressure and exit temperature from the intake. We have our next component, it is compressor. For compressor, we have information about the pressure ratio and efficiency. We can calculate what will be the exit total pressure and exit total temperature. We have our component that's combustion chamber. For the combustion chamber, say we have data that's what is delta P0, my calorific value of the fuel, CP value, maximum turbine entry temperature. That's what is being used to calculate what will be the pressure and the fuel air ratio. Here in this case for HP turbine, the information that is given, it says we are having say efficiency about turbine entry temperature, what is the turbine efficiency. We can calculate what will be the exit pressure and exit temperature from the HP turbine. Now the next component that's what is very important, that's what is my LP turbine. Since we are not having more information available in terms of what is the power requirement from the propeller, then here we need to go with the configuration as we have discussed, we need to calculate our delta H ideal and from that delta H ideal, we need to calculate what will be the power, what will be the pressure, what will be the temperature for this power turbine and based on that we can calculate what all will be the parameters for the nozzle. Once we have all this information available with us, we can easily calculate what all are the performance parameters. So I'm sure this information, that's what is more than sufficient for you to solve this numerical. Let's build the confidence in terms of solving the numerical. Because for last nine weeks, we are discussing the cycle analysis and I'm sure now you are confident enough to solve this kind of numerical. That's what is little different, but you know, it's all you need to learn with. Okay, so here we are stopping with this lecture. We will be discussing the solution for this numerical in next week or okay. And thank you. Thank you very much.